The U.S. commits to work closely with the Caribbean in dealing with a number of challenges facing the region, including the illegal drug trade. Three women have been arrested after three firearms and hundreds of ammunition were found. They are likely to be charged shortly. And a male clerk at the Georgetown Magistrates Court is now behind bars after the disappearance of a case jacket in the trial of two prison officers charged with the death of a Camp Street prison inmate. The details of these and other stories, business news and of course the latest sporting action in the Diamond Mineral Water and NCN Sport News and more after these. Good evening, I am Janal Prasad. And I'm Paul Moore. For this edition of the 6 o'clock news for today, Friday, September 26, 2008. Paul. Thanks, Janal. The United States government has committed to work closely with the Caribbean in dealing with a number of challenges facing the region, including the illegal drug trade. U.S. Secretary of State Condoleezza Rice met with CARICOM leaders and foreign ministers on Thursday in New York, but observers say there is not much optimism following this meeting. Now, Prasad. And I'm Paul. ...of the already troubled Bush administration. Here are details. U.S. Secretary of the State Condoleezza Rice met with Caribbean leaders who are in New York for the United Nations General Assembly. She announced that Washington will support a wide range of initiatives for improving U.S. Caribbean security cooperation. Following the meeting, Rice said the United States has been using the annual meeting with regional leaders to identify the means to counter the threats posed to citizens and democratic states by illicit trafficking in drugs, persons, and weapons. The Secretary of the State said the U.S. will also develop long-term solutions to the vulnerabilities that make nations targets of exploitation by organized crime and drug trafficking cartels. She added that in the coming months, the United States will work closely with its Caribbean partners to articulate a framework for expanding cooperation and marshalling resources in common response to these shared challenges. Grenada's Prime Minister Tillman Thomas said that the regional leaders had urged Washington to con concretize the relationship even though there will be a change of administration following the November 4 presidential elections. The Bush administration has been accused in the past of not lending any air to the issues such as deportation and a comprehensive approach to drug trafficking. The U.S. has also been urged to curb its own drug appetite as much as Caribbean countries have been told by Washington to shore up its borders. But the Grenada PM outlined that they discussed matters of security and the close relationship that exists between the CARICOM region and the United States. The Prime Minister noted that there appears to be a good relationship between the Secretary of State and the CARICOM grouping, adding that it was highlighted that CARICOM should continue to concretize the relationship with the United States. Thomas, speaking on behalf of the combined heads, noted that even though there will be a change in the administration, there will be continuity. However, it is unclear what form the U.S. assistance to the region will take. Edward Lane, The Six O'Clock News. Well, Caribbean leaders have also called for the international financial architecture to be revised to advance the development of poorer nations. St. Vincent and the Grenadines Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonzales with the says with the skyrocketing food prices, the region's agricultural subsidies from developed states is forcing the agro-industries to an uncompetitive demise. Meanwhile, Jamaica's Prime Minister Bruce Golden says developed and developing countries must join hands to implement the initiatives of integrating aid, debt relief, market access, good governance and foreign direct investment. And Prime Minister of the Bahamas said the need for effective permanent representation of developing countries, particularly small developing in the Brenton Woods Institution and the WTO. UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon has called for more energy to be injected into the global partnership to meet the Millennium Development Goals. He says this is necessary if countries are to slash poverty, illiteracy and other socio-economic ills by the target date of 2015. Ban Ki-moon made this call as he addressed a high-level meeting of the global leaders during a special MDG summit of the 63rd UN General Assembly in New York. Here's Edward Lane. New energy is injected in the global fight against poverty, hunger and diseases as several countries attending this special UN summit on the Millennium Development Goals renew their commitment. While acknowledging that the world is behind in meeting the 2015 deadline, UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon said with more financing the momentum can be increased and the goals can be met. Mr. Ban at a media conference last evening said he's delighted by this new commitment. That expression of global commitment would be all the more remarkable because it comes against the backdrop of financial crisis. 
This brand of global leadership, this global partnership is the way of the future. The monies will be spent on bolster food security, education, diseases, training of doctors, invest in fertilizers, seeds, and technology for small farmers in the developing countries. This is global leadership, global partnership in action. It is a model for how to achieve all the other Millennium Development Goals, health care, education, nutrition. We also have received $4.5 billion for the class of 2015. Ladies and gentlemen, I think we all can agree that this year's high-level event on the MDGs has exceeded our most optimistic expectations. Meanwhile, UK Prime Minister Gordon Brown said this has been the largest ever alliance assembling to fight for a common goal. He is optimistic that it will be achieved. Mr. Brown expressed satisfaction that the summit was not a talk shop, but one that will significantly impact on the fight against poverty. This, he says, is a demonstration of how the world can do more for its poorest, even in the face of economic challenges. I look forward to continuing to work with Britain's international partners, with foundations and trusts like those of Bill Gates, uh, with NGOs across uh, the universe, and with the new business partners who have joined today to deliver what we are all committed to do, and that is to achieve the Millennium Development Goals by 2015. The leaders also recognized the close linkages between the food crisis and climate change and the urgent need for an ambitious global agreement on the reduction of greenhouse gas emissions. In that regard, the upcoming climate talks in Poland later this year should result in a concrete work program for negotiations in 2009. Edward Lane, The Six O'Clock News. Sharalal now tells us that during that summit, 30 leaders pledged to take action to address the global food crisis and climate change, which have been severely affecting millions of lives around the world. During a high-level event on the Millennium Development Goals hosted on Thursday, UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon urged world leaders to find ways to address the current food crisis and climate change. Mr. Ban said the poor and hungry are depending on their governments for leadership and solutions and has called on all world leaders to heed their cries. He warned representatives of governments, regional organizations and agencies that the cost of inaction would create a devastating economic ripple throughout the world. The UN Secretary General also stressed the need to increase productivity, especially for small-scale farmers, and invest more into agricultural development, research and technology transfer. Mr. Ban has estimated that it will take some $40 billion in funding for the next three to five years to alleviate the food crisis and ensure a long-term increase in agricultural production. Leaders have pledged an estimated $16 billion in new commitments to slash hunger, poverty, and other socio-economic ills by 2015. In recognition of the close linkages between the food crisis and climate change, they have also agreed to the need for a global agreement on the reduction of greenhouse gas emissions in Copenhagen in 2009. The upcoming climate change talks in Poland later this year is expected to result in a concrete work program for negotiations in 2009. Over $750 million has been pledged for sustainable development and to fight climate change. Several innovative financial proposals and partnerships on climate change have also been advanced. Reporting for the 6 o'clock news, I'm Shard Lal.